Hi friends and welcome back to another episode of our VGC 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and today on the channel we're going to be playing a brand new team taking into this week. It is on the screen in front of you right now. As always, the team is down in the description below. There is a roll paste and a poker paste of the team for you to check out the details and try out if you'd like to. But we're going to be taking... <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, Rayquaza and Groudon onto the ladder this week. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's a combination I've been wanting to try for a long time, and uh, it's going to be exciting to try it out. We've got the standard kind of Rayquaza at the minute with the 50% Berry, Sword Stance, Dragon Ascent, Extreme Speed, Protect. Uh, we've got a mixed kind of Groudon, Naive, with uh, Precipice Blades, Earth Power, Eruption, Protect. Kind of standard uh, Incineroar with the Berry. We've got Suicune, really nice member of the team. Plays very nicely with the Rayquaza as well, with the Airlock ability and Delta Stream. A really nice check for Groudon, obviously speed control there with Tailwind. Then we've got Tapu Koko, we've got the Ferinium. It helps us against other opposing threats, you know, Ultra and Necrozma and things like that. It can be a little bit problematic for the team. And then Stacks uh, with our Trick Room element of the team if we need to go down that route. Uh, Groudon can perform in Trick Room depending on what we're up against, but does come in handy against things like Xerneas in general that otherwise would be a little bit harder to deal with. So, without further ado, my friends, we will jump straight onto the ladder. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to find an opponent. But as always, if you do enjoy this sort of content, please remember to drop a like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content. And as always, leave your comments down below because I do love hearing from you. And uh, I will try and get back to each and every one of you as soon as I can. I am wearing, finally it arrived, this new Flinch Squad hoodie. And you can see it's got like the print in the hood. It's it's super nice. It feels super nice. It's really, really nice. I love it. I love it. It's got even got the little flinch heart on the back of the sleeve here. It's just, yeah, it's a really nice hood. Um, if you did like it and you wanted to grab one, obviously there's a link down in the description to the Teespring site where you can pick one up and uh, rep one at events uh, or just in general because you just love being part of the Flinch Squad, which you all are. Anyway, we are looking for our first opponent. We've got a music locked in, sitting on a rating of 1643. Uh, so not too bad, not great though, uh, we really want to be pushing a bit higher than that, especially because we're going to be getting towards the end of the Ultra series very soon, and I know we're going to be running officially into January, but I mean, when Sword and Shield comes, I think what we're going to do on the channel is probably leave most of the Sword and Shield stuff and go straight headfirst into... Um, Sword and Shield when it does come out. That's a bit of a shame. We did find an opponent, but they uh, they dropped off. They saw us and they fled. Um, okay, let's go back into this. It wasn't us this time. Um, but yeah, like I say, uh, I think because I'm just so hyped for the games, I am literally so hyped for the games. I can't wait for the 15th. It feels like it's forever away, but it's really not. It's only a few weeks away now. Um, so when we do that, I'm going to be doing all sorts of content on Sword and Shield. Obviously, it'll take a little bit of time to get a team together, but I'm going to be trying to uh, get that initial team started as soon as possible. But at the same time, you think, like, I'll be working on that. We'll probably have Showdown, Showdown guys, get that stuff up and running, like, super quick. So we'll probably just do Showdown teams and things like that to begin with, and I'll do the in-game content as and when I can. Um, but I'm, I've got, like, a week off work to just plow through as much stuff I can get done as possible and hopefully that sets us up for going forward into Sword and Shield and then obviously when January the 1st comes around we're going to have our first official tournament it's going to be interesting to see how they uh, they set the tournaments up especially with the Switch console there's no IR ports or anything like that so there's still questions to be answered I think with how tournaments are going to be ran on the Switch it's going to be interesting to say the least but um I'm sure they've got something in mind and all planned and ready to go, but I um, I can't wait. I literally can't wait. And uh, if you guys want to keep up to new, uh, up with news, because one of the things I've, I've just not got time for on the channel here is to do uh, news videos. Like if I did this full time, it would be no problem, but having a job and things like that it cuts down the time that I've got to actually record content. So. I really want to cover news on uh, Sword and Shield, but I do that over on my uh, Instagram, if I can even think this morning. My brain's a little bit lethargic, I swear. Uh, but yeah, if you want to follow me over on Instagram, it's at Osiris Studios over on Instagram. I, I put up all the news when it comes out and all the, the little tidbits of uh, information that we're getting about Sword and Shield and obviously about the battle content and things like that. We're not going to find an opponent anytime soon, so rather than me 
drivel on for a little bit longer. We'll cut the video now and uh, we'll come back when we find our first opponent of the episode. We've got Luca up as our first opponent today, so we'll hop straight into team preview and see what he's got. So Luca running a team of Groudon, Salamence, Incineroar, Tapu Fini, Lunala and Stack Attacker. So that very common Groudon Lunala core. It was the core that won the World Championships this year. So we know what it's all about. It's got Trick Room. It's got Tailwind options there. Uh, very solid team. Defensively and offensively very threatening. So what are we going to do against this team? I think if Trick Room goes up, it's going to be it's going to be difficult for us to deal with especially with the Groudon um, the Lunala, have we got a way to uh, deal with it straight away I don't really feel like we have um, I mean we can go something like Tapu Koko potentially and Incineroar um, it's just a bit more difficult if we see Incineroar and Lunala come out for my opponent um, but then if the Trick Room does go up at least we've got stacks that we can potentially utilise and benefit and the thing is like Suicune's pretty solid anyway, so we could bring Suicune uh, to deal with the likes of Groudon and Stack Attacker. With Intimidate support, it's going to make things a lot easier for us. So, um, I think what we'll do is go Incineroar, Suicune. Mm, do we want a Groudon? Probably. And we could go. We could go Groudon, Incineroar, and Ray. And then leave stacks at home, which I don't really feel great about, but I want to bring my restricteds. So I, I don't know. It means leaving one of my restricteds at home, and I feel like both can do really well in this battle. Um, you know, if we had Raw and Suicune, it's another option. It would be a good way for us to prevent the Trick Room going up, but we don't have it, unfortunately. We're going to see Salamence and Lunala come out for my opponent. That's not too bad. I wonder, it depends as well, if the Lunala is holding um, the, the Corba Berry or the Cassid Berry. Um, and Salomon's going to come out uh, with our Groudon and our Lunala. Um, now we could get a big powerful fat eruption off if we wanted to. Um, I don't think there's any point of going for a Tailwind right here because the Trick Room threat's just pretty obvious. And that's the last thing we want to do. Salamence is putting a lot of pressure onto a Groudon as well, like with Hyper Voice or a Double Edge, can do some decent damage here. Um, we could just Snarl and then switch into Incineroar, and then at least the next turn it gives us a little bit of um, room to manoeuvre around with Fake Out support and then the, Sal uh, the Intimidate support as well. We are going to see Incineroar come in for my opponent. Okay. So that's not the worst thing in the world. They're preserving their Intimidate as well with Salamence. We don't see a Mega Evolve, which is smart. Uh, and we'll just take Groudon out the firing line. Because the last thing we want is if this Lunala is Z-Move, we don't want to, to be losing it early on. Alright, so we'll get an Intimidate onto the opposing Incineroar, which is useful. And we do get a Snarl and reveal that it is the Cobra Berry on the Lunala. So we do reduce... The, the special defense and going f before the Lunala indicates it's gone for a trick room here, which kind of makes Incineroar's life a little bit easier. I, I would say that's ah, not though. Hmm, that's interesting. So we're just going to see a Moonguys beam it probably into the Incineroar slot where the Groudon was. Yeah, but we take that pretty comfortably here, um, and we're in a nice position now where we can fake out um, the opposing Incineroar. We could go for a Scald into that slot as well. Um, and it's just a knockoff into the Lunala. Um, or we could just double into the Lunala. Thing is, though, I really don't like leaving Incineroar out on the field. I'm kind of more tempted to go for a U-turn into the opposing Incineroar, just so we've got the, the pivot out, um, and we kind of keep momentum going on our side of the field. I'm going to see the Lunala switch, and Salamence hit the field once again. And I wonder if we're just going to see a U-turn from the opposing Incineroar as well. You know, the interesting thing is we were kind of put off going for a, a, a Tailwind, but if we'd went for it, it would put us in a way better position, especially this next turn, where we can potentially get Groudon back onto the field, stop firing off some big eruptions. Uh, we'll get a U-turn into the opposing Incineroar. It'd be interesting to see what it goes for. It's probably going to just U-turn as well. Um, hmm. Do we bring in Ray or Groudon? Maybe better to bring in Ray, to be honest, because both Intimidators are out in the field now, so Ray's in a, a way better position to actually start doing some damage and doing some work. 
and there's a U-turn from the Incineroar. It has gone into the Suicune. And maybe we see Lunala come back out onto the field now. But if we can keep Lunala checked, you kind of think that like, my opponent's not really got that many great options to... Um, we could Snarl and just drag an Ascent into the Suicune. Uh, the, to the Lunala. I'm kind of tempted to do that, to be honest. I mean, we could go for a Sword Stance, but I'm not really in a position now where I want to keep uh, Rayquaza out on the field, and I think that Incineroar will probably come in for the Salamence. Come oh. No, no, no. Okay. Unless the Salamence has Draco Meat here. That would be bad. Okay. I mean, getting rid of the Lunala is like a big goal here, because I think like once their speed control goes down, it means we can utilize Tailwind on our Suicune. So, there's the Delta Stream. Let's see what the Salamence goes for. It is going for, go for a Tailwind, so that's fine, because we can match that. Uh, and we should be able to get rid of this Lunala. Dragon Ascent should do a nice chunk of damage and hopefully put the um, the Lunala in range for a Snarl to pick up the knockout. Boosh! Oh, I don't know if it's gonna, you know. Uh, we know the Z-Move's not on there, so that is kind of something we've got going for us, I guess. Oh, it is enough, okay. <laughs> oh, great, okay. Maybe we get a little bit lucky there. Um, the only problem here is it opens the door for my opponent to bring the Groudon in and take advantage of this Tailwind. But we're not in the worst position either because um, we can bring in Incineroar, get an Intimidate off and Tailwind ourselves. And then we've got that extra turn of Tailwind. Um, and as long as Incineroar can stick around for a turn, when we switch it in, it means we've got Fake Out support as well. Um, and the Groudon coming in, obviously now it will overwrite our Delta Stream. Uh, so we do need to, to reposition our Rayquaza anyway, but uh, it makes sense to do that regardless, just because um, of the fact that we have just Dragon Ascented and we want to reset those drops. So like I say, what we'll do, we'll switch Rayquaza out, so we've got that Delta Stream to bring back in uh, later on, and then we will Tailwind ourselves and bring in Cinema onto the field. And you know, Suicune is bulky enough, there is no way without like a double crit here from my opponent to take the Suicune down, like no way. Especially if, like, you, it's such a bulky Pokemon. This is what makes it so good, I feel, you know. It, it's one of those Pokemon that's quite reliable, really consistent, and uh, it does everything that you kind of need it to when you need it to do it. I'm going to see a double edge into Incineroar. We're probably going to lose Incineroar now if we see a Presbus Blades, which we do. Ah, uh, Suicune avoids because it's just a, a ninja. We're going to lose Incineroar, but that's perfect because now we are going to be able to bring in a Rayquaza. But to be honest, we could just bring in uh, our, our own Groudon and then we kind of pin the opposing Groudon um, with uh, Earth Power, which should be enough to pick up the knot. Mm, I don't know if it's going to be enough, actually, you know. I'm going to bring in Ray. Because then we pressure the opposing Groudon, right? This is what we do. Um, we go for the Ice Beam into the Salamence and I think we sort... Hmm, actually... If this is like the World Championship winning team, that Groudon's probably got, um, it's probably got Dragon Claw. So I'm gonna scald into it, hope that our Suicune's faster than it, which I would assume it is, and I'm still gonna Sword Stance with Rayquaza. That Salamence is minus one. Salamence's gonna switch out, and Sinner are gonna come onto the field. I thought, really, the better switch out of everything would be the Groudon switching out so you can get your weather control back so you're not threatened as much from the Suicune. And we are going to get the Sword Stance up. I don't think a Dragon Claw minus one will pick up Rayquaza anyway, um, but we do get the Scald into the Groudon, and I think this pretty much seals the game for us now. Ooh, the Groudon hangs on! It is going to get the Dragon Claw! Oh! Yeah, but minus one, you see, it's not not really doing as much. It is an effective attack, but um, I think now, like, my opponent's pretty hard-pressed to really do very much. I mean, they can go for a U-turn here. Uh, we can just freely snarl, and I think what I'll do is actually go for a Dragon Ascent into the Incineroar. It's got to fake us out, but it might be cheeky and think. I'm not going to go for the fake out. I'm going to try and get a double, a double Intimidate here. We are going to see the Groudon switch out. And the Salamence come in. Do we say fake out? Yeah, we do. Bish bash bosh. Okay, that's fine. Um, because 
and we should be their tailwind should end now so it puts us in a position where yeah we can ice beam the mens and just dragon ascent the incineral and then this kind of closes it up um this is the one thing i really like about this team as well it feels very good at like controlling the field um and you don't really feel too anxious at any point where you're, you're going to be in a really bad losing position and I think the Suicune really plays a big part in that because of how bulky it is and the support options that it gives you. So let's see what my opponent does. It may protect the Salamence here. It makes sense too. But I mean, if they don't... The problem is the Delta Stream is up. Like, if we really want to play this a little bit better to deny the, 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 the Tailwind completely, we'd switch our Rayquaza out. But I really want to just get rid of the Incineroar. Yep, and we'll probably not get rid of the Salamence though. That's the only drawback, but I don't really worry about the Salamence too much. To be honest, this should still do a nice chunk of damage. Yeah, we're not gonna pick up the knockout, but it's definitely in extreme speed range. Um, and now our Tailwind runs out, but we've got extreme speed. So I mean, I don't really know what my opponent kind of does from here. Because uh, the Snarl will take the Groudon down with Suicune. And it's not like we're going to go down to a um, Dragon Claw. Right, okay. And we could Tailwind ourselves if we wanted, but I don't know if it's really that necessary. Um, Alright, let's go for a Nice Beam into Groudon and Extreme Speed into Salamence. I mean, the worst thing here that could happen is that... Uh, the Salamence protects, the Groudon goes for a Dragon Claw into the Rayquaza, but even then they're going to lose their Groudon, it should be enough to get the Ments, yep, and the Ice Beam will probably lose Ray to Dragon Claw, oh no, it's going for the Precipice, okay, Suicune, just doesn't want to get hit by these Precipice Blades, <laughs> and there we go, we pick up a nice win for us to kick off with today, so that's really good for us, my friends, and the team perform really well, um, Really quite comfortable, but a very good game to Luca. And um, I think getting rid of the Lunala, like we said early on, it was like our main prerogative to get rid of the Lunala. Uh, the Trick Room would have been a lot trickier to deal with uh, than the Tailwind there. But um, thankfully, we got through it and we came out on the right side of things. So we will hop straight onto the ladder and we'll try and find our next opponent. The ladder just feels like there's less and less people on here all the time now. I don't know if it's just the times that I'm playing, because I know a lot of people still play ladder and still seem to, to ladder up pretty quickly. So there must be plenty of people on. It might be the times I'm playing, but I mean, there we go. We've got our next opponent from Japan. 1756 rated player playing, um, well, we'll jump into team preview and we'll have a look. Playing a team of Viveltal. Togunamaru, Tepufini, Cortana, Gengar, and Kyoga. So a really nice call. A call that I think has got a lot of potential at the minute in the current format. Uh, you've got the Veltal and Kyoga uh, restricted combination. It's not something that we've seen since very early on in the format, to be honest. But Veltal can offer Tailwind support as well as that Cortana that can do that as well. Tepufini got soft speed control with potentially Icy Wind there. Going to be the Mega on the team of Gengar, so it will try to trap us in. And then Togunamaru with its Fake Out support and Lightning Rod that kind of takes Tapu Koko out of the game. But because we have the Ferium on Tapu Koko, it is something that we can potentially uh, utilize to take down Yveltal and get around the, the Togunamaru that way. We've got to be worried about the Gengar though. The Gengar does cause us a few problems. Um, I am going to bring Tapu Koko because I think Tapu Koko is going to be generally quite good here, especially if we can get rid of the Togunamaru. Um, do we want Suicune or Incineroar? Like Incineroar is decent. It's not great against Kyogre, of course, um, but its pivot, pivoting ability is very good. Although we could just go Ray, Groudon, and Suicune, and I think that might be all right. I th uh, yeah, we'll go with that. I don't like leaving Incineroar behind, but it's probably because I'm just I've been so conditioned through the last two seasons playing VGC where I'm like Incineroar has to come every time. <laughs> 
But it doesn't, it really doesn't. And we're going to be the slower fake out user anyway, so if we're bringing it just for that, it's not really kind of justified. Um, we're going to see Veltal and Gengar come out. Okay. That makes a lot of sense, because the Gengar kind of protects the Veltal. Um, we don't really want to be sword dancing in front of an Veltal either. <sighs> okay. I mean, one thing we could potentially do is go just Dragon Ascent into the Gengar. Um, I don't really want to risk a speed tie though. Um, and it might be better to get something like Sweet Gold onto the field. Or we could just double protect. But then Coco's trapped, so we definitely don't want that. Let's bring in Sweet Gold and um, let's Dragon Ascent the Gengar. Yeah, let's go for that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's just hope that Sibelto hasn't got foul play. Which it blatantly has. But I think if you're Gengar, you probably have to attack here. That's the only thing I would say. You, you like to, to get around the Coco, unless you protect. And then the Evelto probably sets up Tailwind. Let's see. So the Gengar going to Mega Evolve. Sludge Bomb. Alright, uh, yeah. Trying to check that core core. Does a big chunk of damage to Sweet Queen, doesn't it? It's so powerful, Mega Gengar. Right. Is this going to pick up the knockout? I hope it does. It does! Okay, that's great. We get rid of the Gengar. That makes our lives so much easier going forward. Gengar gone. Yuvalto goes for Tailwind. Ideal. Okay, that's perfect because now we can pretty much guarantee that we'll be able to get a tailwind up with Suicune now. I don't think my opponent's really got anything that would really threaten us too badly, other than the Cartana, of course. Yeah, there it is. There it is. There's the Cartana. Um, alright. <laughs> Speak too soon, my friend. Uh, I think we can get Coco back onto the field. Um, and do we protect Rayquaza? I mean, we could get Groudon onto the field now. I kind of really would prefer not to bring Groudon onto the field, though. Um, and we might be just better off protecting Ray. This is where Incineroar would have been incredibly good, because it's such an easy switch in on both of these targets. But we haven't got it, so we'll have to try and work around it a little bit. So, so protecting Ray this turn. We'll see what the Cartana goes for Leaf Blade, yeah. It's not going to be great to take with Coco, but we do take it in a foul play into the Ray. Okay. We have to stall out. Um, these Tailwind turns, honestly. I'm going to switch Ray out to Suicune. Reset those drops. And then we've got one more turn of Tailwind to, uh, to deal with. Okay. So we'll get Suicune back onto the field. Hopefully my opponent doesn't predict this. There's a leaf blade. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And if I'll play. Alright, well Sweet Queen should take this. Yep. Yeah. Now let's go for Hmm. Do we bring Groudon and Ray in? I kind of want Coco on the field the next turn, so I'm wondering if we can bring possibly Rayquaza on to the field this side in place of the Coco. And then we go for a Tailwind, try and get a cheeky Tailwind up with Suicune, because then if Suicune goes down, we get Coco back onto the field. And if we've got Rayquaza, Coco, I think we're in a decent position to try and close the matchup, because we could just possibly dazzle. And Dragon Ascent, the Cortana, depending on... Okay, they're going to... Yeah, go for that. And then we're going to take a foul play. Not going to be nice, but it's not the worst. Okay. Foul play. Okay. <sighs> That's a lot of damage. Um, okay, now we have to get the Coco back onto the field. Now it's whether or not... Um, the Cartana's got Tailwind. I don't know if it will have, though. 
The problem is with the Cortana is that it could potentially have the sash, which would make a lot of sense. Um, <sighs> All right, we just got to make a call. I think now. Does the Cortana have sash? I would imagine it does. I'm going to double into the Cortana and the problem is as well, like if we leave the Veltal alone it could go for a Tailwind which would be super bad for us. Um, I'm going to Dragon Ascent the Cortana and I'm going to go for the Z move into the Veltal. I'm just going to do it because I think if we can remove the Veltal now it's going to make life so much easier for us. Sucker Punch! No! Crit! Do we take that anyway? I can't believe that! Oh! And a knockoff. We've lost. So badly. Oh. This is the worst. Oh, we can't do anything now. Well played to my opponent. I mean, this is one of the drawbacks of not having a faster Rayquaza as well. Uh, because now it's so easy for my opponent just to bring in Kyogre um, and that is going to be game but we'll see we'll see if we can play it out I mean uh, I'm so sad about that I need to do the calc I'm going to just I'm going to lock in but I'm going to do the calc um, uh, let's have a look let's have a look okay so we'll lock into I mean Presbyter's Blades, it makes the most sense. And then we'll pull up the damage calculator and have a quick look. Tapu. What do we have, like 32 HP? Oh, <laughs> another crit. God damn it. <laughs> okay, good game to my opponent. Uh, Eveltal, let's see. Just standard Eveltal, Sucker Punch. Um, okay. Yeah, it gets us like pretty much. Um, yeah, every time with Sucker Punch. So. It depends. Like if it was, if it was Max Jolly, it does. If it is, yeah, it's gonna get us every time from that range. So that's a little discrepancy on our part. And I think that the whole problem there was the tailwind going up and us not matching it. Like we needed to probably lead Suicune there and match the tailwind, and then we wouldn't be in such a bad position. Um, like I think uh, Suicune Groudon there would be quite good because then we can pressure the Gengar um, and then we've got the Tailwind set up as well. So it's more of a lead issue thing there for us. It's just really disappointing because we want to keep on the momentum with this team and uh, we didn't quite do it there. But uh, we'll be back tomorrow with more games from this team. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode, my friends. Have a great day yourselves and I'll see you all for another one tomorrow. So until then, take care and bye-bye.